powered by Red Media in partnership with TSN. It is season five, episode 49 of the Rain Drakes Hockey Podcast, presented by our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey, who have introduced the first release of the Canadian Club Invitation Series, CC 15-year-old Sherry Cask, signature CC Classic 12-year-old whiskey, finished with a secondary aging in Oloroso Sherry Casks. And um, I feel like I sound marginally better, Ray. No, what do you I'm think? Just like, am I inching no. closer? No, no, right. no. That's I, too bad. As you were doing the opening there, I'm like, yeah, he sounds no better. He promised he would <laughs> sound better on on today, and it just didn't happen. Yeah, yeah I'm feeling a bit better. Um, that, I don't feel sick. I just sound like a sore. You know what? So we'll yeah, see how the yeah. day see how the day plays out because I've got insider trading. Um, obviously, we're recording the podcast here on Thursday. We've got the Leafs and the Flyers without John Tortorella on the Flyers bench tonight. So maybe if I don't talk for the rest of the day, I'll be okay for that regional game. See well, I think the people out. around yeah. you will be happier. <laughs> you know, especially Holly, no question about that. <laughs> um, why don't we just dive right into the headlines? Yeah, sure. Brought to you by Tim Hortons. The iconic roll up to win is back with big prizes. Now until the end of March, you can earn one roll for each eligible purchase. Just be sure to scan for the Tim's rewards before paying or use a scan and pay. Every roll revealed earns an entry for a chance to win a Tim's financial $10,000 daily jackpot prize. Big, big money. For the full list of prizes and all the details and more contest, in, uh, contest information, just log in, check out roll up to win dot c a um thought we'd start with the colorado avalanche ray if you're okay with that and sure, sure. nate mckinnon because it's top of mind given how they rolled back into uh the game last night wednesday night against the vancouver canucks uh canucks coach rick to hockey post game said quote mckinnon said i'm taking this game and that's pretty much what happened, didn't it, in that third yep. period? I mean, he had some help with Rantanen and some of the other dynamic pieces of the Colorado Avalanche. But undeniably, this team is a league powerhouse. Not just in the West. The Avalanche are the real deal here. Uh, they are uh, for a couple reasons. I did the game last night, so I'm standing yeah. between the benches. And a couple things I, I noticed, noticed was, was Vancouver was almost perfect for 59 and or for uh 39 and a half minutes they they had a three nothing lead um the colorado bench they didn't look really flustered or frustrated and that would have been different a couple of years ago they i think you would have been able to see it um a lot of door slamming that sort of thing last night nothing they were just plowing ahead in a game that vancouver was terrific in and they couldn't get going Yep. Then Georgiev comes out to play the puck and he misses it at three nothing, and it's at a really sharp angle. He turns, stops, and dives back. And as Lindholm shoots the puck at kind of the empty net, it's a sharp angle, but Georgiev gets his stick on it, deflects it wide. Nachuskin, no, Rantanen scored with one point eight seconds left. Yeah, in the second period, so that was. That was within 20 seconds, right? So it should have been or could have been 4 nothing. Right. Instead, it's 3-1. I'm telling you, Drake, the entire building sounded <laughs> and felt <laughs> different when the puck went in the net. So now it's 3-1, and of course, you don't want to get into the spot where you're defending or whatever, and Vancouver takes a penalty, yeah. and they take another one. It's a 5-on-3. Nate laser beams a one timer to make it three two. They uh they score a, a goal they reviewed for a few seconds to make it three three. And then I did you see the winner? I did. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. McKinn McKinnon's one timer hits Juleson on the power play in <laughs> overtime. So ten seconds left. Susie's yeah. just going to bank it off the glass and he shoots it into the crowd. And Susie'd had a terrific night. Yeah. That's the way it goes, right? So he shoots it, it hits Juleson. Bounces off of Nachuskin's visor, who's six foot 27. I mean, he's a monster. Yeah, he's, it hits him in the face, it, it goes into the net, and game's over. And so, like that, Colorado won a game they probably shouldn't. And mm -hmm. like the top end of that roster, it's like as soon as they smell a little blood, 
They yeah. play those. They play the five guys almost exclusively together. Uh, Taves, right. McCarr, Nachuskin, Ranton, and McKinnon. They all five are on yeah. the ice. So you're even if things are going well, I'm watching. I'm like, you know what? You can always feel like it doesn't take much for something to go really <laughs> wrong the other way. Like it's it's yeah. really they're a fun fun team to watch. Strong chance that Devon Taves will join us on the Rain Drakes podcast uh, early next week. I mean, they're traveling, so... Um, I'll talk to his agent. I'll talk to his yeah. agent, who's okay. my agent. Yeah, no, and, perfect. Um, I said to him Get earlier in the year, around. I was trying to do a thing in my contract, and I'm like, no wonder I can't get a hold of Ross Gurney. Because <laughs> he's doing your $50 million extension. He's not even <laughs> returning my phone calls. There is a priority list when it comes <laughs> yes. to negotiating certain deals. I'll get that. Uh, just a wrap up thought, though. You know, the maturity and the confidence that we see in the Avalanche, I mean, that's well earned, right? That's that yep. comes, that's a byproduct of facing adversity, getting punched in the, in the face a few times, but then also learning how to overcome that adversity and, and win a Stanley Cup. Well, I don't know how many years ago it was. You know, quite a few now, but remember back to when McKinnon and Bednar got into a, a screaming match on the bench. Yeah, yeah, right. Like that was that was young, that was inexperienced, that's not been through the wars yet, and all that stuff is, you know, you build up some. The term is you build up scar tissue, and like I I watch McKinnon closely because I'm fascinated with him. I just I think he's an amazing amazing player, and. Mm -hmm. Not really once last night did he sh show outwardly any emotion. Like, remember back just even before they won the cup, he would come back and slam the door and break his stick on the bench and yell and scream at somebody. None of that. <laughs> and you follow your leader. Yeah. You, you really yeah. do. And it, I, I was, I think, I think that's of the things I was impressed with. That really stood out with for me last night. How about Zach Hyman, Ray? If we shift over to the Edmonton Oilers, another hat trick, the fourth hat trick of the year for Hyman. Uh, I believe that's his fifth of his career. I mean, did you have Zach Hyman pegged at any point as a 50 goal scorer? I didn't. No, not, no. 50 goals is <laughs> incredibly hard. And, and yeah. you know, and of course he plays with McDavid, which is the great benefit. Oh, but yeah. But other guys could score 50 goals too, and sure. they don't. I mean, it's it's really hard to do it. You unwind all the way back to, you know, he was a Florida Panther draft pick, a seventh round pick. He wasn't going to sign in Florida. The, you know, the Red Wings were, you know, were pretty hot on, on Dylan Larkin at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And when they were looking at Larkin at the University of Michigan, they were, you know, Mike Babcock was on to Zach Hyman. You know, it's kind of like yeah. the type of player Babcock would, you know, would glom onto. And and so when he got to Toronto, they made a trade. I, I forget who the player was that went down there, but it was a player for seventh round pick. And mm -hmm. you know who it was? I'm almost certain. I think Ryan Rashad can do a little research. I think it was Carter Verhage. It is, yeah, yeah, and who's turned out pretty damn well for in in his career. I I don't know if I got that right. Now I'm second guessing myself. Are you okay, checking hold, that? Hold. I am, I am, I am. Uh, so no, no, it wasn't. Panthers. No, no, hang on. It was McCaig. Uh, okay, rights were traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs in June 19th. I know this is great. This is great to listen to, but it's McCaig. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't Verhage. All right. Okay. Well, you know, anyway. you gave up looking on it. You gave up. Well, I, I, I'm trying you know, to like, run a podcast. You, no, well, you're. This is your sole work right now. <laughs> it's a it's a focus to get the the trade right. Anyway, you went to Toronto okay, for on. for a seventh round pick, and I thought he was a twenty goal guy if he was going to be anything because of the, I thought he was a third line guy. Remember they mm -hmm. had him and Connor Brown together and they traded Brown because they liked Hyman better. And then he ended up with yeah. Matthews and damn, he's been money this year, like money. What a, what an amazing, 
a piece of that team because it's yeah. not just the goals. The goals are amazing, okay. but it's the rest of it too. June 19th, 2015, the Panthers trade Zach Hyman and the conditional seventh round draft pick to the Toronto Maple Leafs in exchange for Greg McKegg. So the pick was never given to Toronto. Is, 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 uh, it was on the condition that Hyman didn't sign with the Maple Leafs, with, which ultimately he obviously did. So you, you, we eventually got there. We got it right. Well, see, but that's the digging. Yeah. I think you just showed a little bit of the Drager dog on a bone. Yeah. Although a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a slow yeah. dog on the bone there, I might add. But it know, was a anyway. bit, yeah, it was a bit sluggish. Let's just, so if you're the Maple Leafs, now there's no, it, it, Carter Verhege is a classic example. We we skirted right. it up, but we brought his name up. I mean, if you knew what Carter Verhege was going to be, obviously right. you never let him leave the organization. But I remember all of the reporting and the opinion on what Kyle Lewis should do with Zach Hyman. You know, it clearly was a cap-related decision not right. to give him the eight years or whatever the money is. But at five and a half million dollars now for what another four years in Edmonton, provided his body can can hold up and looks like he's pretty solid right now. Yeah, that's a hell of a deal, isn't it? Well, it is, but you. What what's going to happen is there's going to be an age decline, right? Like it's it's going to happen to everybody. I don't know why he would be different than the right, yeah, than everyone else, yeah. But at that point, people will focus on what is the player then and forget the previous six years. Yeah, like this guy is a workhorse. He's a solid citizen. Like in your locker room, yeah, you need you need steadiness. And Hyman is steadiness. I, I think a lot of him as a uh, oh. as a person. I mean, like if if people have gotten the chance to talk to him, and um, or to just listen to him do an interview, he yeah. is a solid, solid person. And um, I'm I'm happy for him. I'm happy to see him score. And I'm I'm co quite honestly, I'm amazed that he's at the total he's at because it's <laughs> it's just a crazy number. It's a crazy number to be at. It is. It is. Uh, by the way, um, Connor Brown scored a goal. I mean, that's kind of big news in Edmonton, right? His first goal well, of the year, and the way he scored it was, you know, kind of uh, Connor Brown like. Well, I, I don't know what is Connor Brown like right now, poor guy. I mean, like, <laughs> it's like just go in the net. The, I don't care if it goes it, off a leg, the arse. It, there, there, just right cross right the line. before Christmas, range, there was a he scored and it got reviewed and taken back, and it was, yeah. Yeah. It was kind of funny at Christmas. And then it's not funny it's anymore. It's not funny. No. And so when they were zipping hats on the ice yesterday and going bonkers for him, I I was thinking and we were talking just off air before you jumped on about, and my opinion, man, he must have been almost embarrassed by it. Like, are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. Like, this is ridiculous. I'm, <laughs> I'm 60 games or whatever into the season. I'm now just pulled ahead of both goalies. Yeah. like. That's that would be a tough one. How difficult would it be to maintain your level of confidence? Like nobody would peg Connor Brown coming into this year as a what a twenty five goal guy, but you do expect him to to chip in. I, I mean, in some capacity, shorthanded, whatever. Yeah. You know, I mean, he plays in the NHL. He's scored, you know, uh, his share in the National Hockey League. So his confidence the the fact that he has maintained a level of confidence it speaks oh, to his I, level I, of character. I don't I don't know that he's maintained a level of confidence I no. like I what he's maintained is a work rate which right yeah which is yeah. I think what you're saying or in a different way but I think that's that's not easy to do either because oh. each each day the bag of rocks that you carry around on your back yeah someone adds two more to it <laughs> and man it, it you know there's all the time to we see the games but then you got to extrapolate that out that's a big word yeah. for you drake you got to stretch know, that out and it's all day it never goes away you go to practice you grind your way through practice you do a workout you grind yeah. your way through a workout the game is supposed to be the fun part and i would i would think he, part of his psyche would be that, oh my God, everybody in the building is looking at me not scoring again. <laughs> like I, I, I would, that's how I'm pretty sure I would have felt it. Don't yeah. forget, I think in season one, 
he was with Ottawa. We had him on. He had eight goals in eight games. Yeah. You know, like he, it's yeah, not yeah. like he, I, I thought he would be a coming off of ACL stuff that he, he missed all of last year. I thought he'd be, yeah. I don't know, 10 or 12 goals this year. Yeah. You know, he's, he's going to have to get hot. Connor Bedard, speaking of hot, man, he's on a bit of a clip here, right? Eight yeah. points in two games, including that five pointer in one game the other night. Um, I mean, nothing from a point production perspective should be overly surprising uh, about Bedard. So when you look back at the season that he's had, you know, injury aside, um, yeah. what do you think will be your takeaway? Like, what will be the most impressive thing? Just, again, you know, we mentioned confidence with Brown, just how he was able to step in the National Hockey League as a teenager and, and show some of that flash that we saw in Major Junior. Yeah, I, I didn't think he was going to be able to um, to handle or carry the puck with the regularity yeah. that he does. And part of it is he's he's good enough to do it. I just I just didn't know that he would be able to do it this year. Right. In particular, it's it's not like he's got a bunch of creative guys around him. <laughs> like holy smokes, there's some nights there you look at that and you're like, like I know they're building and they're building for the future, but I I would think in the summer they got to spend a little bit of money and get somebody to, you know, to to be able to play give and go with him because right now they don't have it. Like, yeah, what's he got? Fifty points or yeah. whatever in fifty three games. It's crazy. It's a it's really a yeah. It's really a pretty incredible feat. I, uh, I, he's he's had an excellent year. He has. I like the personality that we're starting, and and maybe it's because that's the world that he's grown up in, right? You know, they got a microphone on this kid all the time, which I enjoy it as a fan. I enjoy it from a media media perspective. I would hate it if I were him or I were his teammate. Because as we caught the other night, you know, the exchange with the official where he's politely telling the official to get out of the way. <laughs> like you're, yeah. you're, 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 you're impeding my ability to make a play based on where you're standing. Um, but that what's wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. He did it politely. There was a bit of an exchange, and the official had some fun with him and said, well, you're fast, I'm slow, so there's not much I can do about it. There is, um, there, there's plenty of ways that guys tell officials to move. Yeah, correct. <laughs> and not all of them sound like that. No. You, you know, no. like, so I, I, most of the time when a guy's uh, mic'd up, uh, well, almost all the time, unless yeah. it's kind of an ambient pickup, uh, it goes through the truck. It gets approved before it gets on the air. Yeah. Um, you know, so like there is a filter to it. Like last night, there was no filter on Quinn Hughes had a penalty. And <laughs> it's awesome. He goes to the, the box. box. <laughs> and uh, well, no, actually, um, I'm trying to think. I mean, the game was all of last night, but I forget who the official was. And uh, he said, would you please get in the penalty box? It, yeah. it was like. Jim Hughes telling Quinn to go clean up his dishes. He's like, would you please get in the penalty box? And I mean, that that, that mic pickup could turn yeah. out to be a lot different. Oh, sure. For, for different guys, it, you know, <laughs> it sounds a lot different. I also like, you know, the, the combination of Foligno and Bedard is hilarious right. because, you know, there's been so many of those exchanges that have been caught on microphone. You know, Foligno talking to you about how He's never going to be able to retire because he has too much to teach Connor Bedard, <laughs> you know, as to how to be a real good NHL pro and all of that. I mean, Nick Foligno is perfectly cast and a great signing in whatever capacity you want to right. describe in Chicago with Connor Bedard. He he is, and um, I, I had similar age shake my headness at the end of my career when. Um, I had Patrick Steph and we had, we had our family had him over for dinner and Patrick was 18 and um, my son was 12 and I was 36. <laughs> so they had more in common than I had with Patrick <laughs> and he was on my team. And yeah, I saw Nick at, at Chris Chelios's retirement weekend and I asked him, uh, you know, I told him the story. He's like, oh, absolutely. They're in the basement playing like knee hockey and stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I'm no, too tired. That. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny stuff. It is. It is. 
Uh, less funny, uh, just the mood around the Detroit Red Wings right now, right? I mean, it, it probably feels to the Red Wings like a good start in, in the positives of the first half anyway, and, and part mm-hmm. of the second half are, are kind of dwindling here, and they're letting an opportunity kind of leak away, and that's a playoff opportunity. There's still time. There's still time. They're in the conversation for sure. Lucas Raymond and Ben Sherratt involved in a tussle. Not a fight. It was a it wasn't even a wrestling match. It was a tussle during a Red Wings practice on Wednesday. I mean, you just told a story, you know, around Patrick Steffen when you were 36, he was 18. Back in your day, a fight in practice wasn't that big of a deal, was it? Because it mm-hmm. probably happened what a number of times, if not several times over the course of the year, depending on you know, how your team was playing, clearly. Well, I, I would say there would be one or two per year. There would be plenty of for generally forward and defensemen because uh, I yeah. didn't see it, but I'm Battle guessing drills, that, all of I, that. Yeah, right? I was guessing yeah. it was around the front of the net. And, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and Sherrod probably was, you know, shoving him out of the way and <laughs> Raymond got tired Sherrod. of it. Yeah, yeah and, and Raymond probably got tired and slashed him and then off they go. And yeah. Yeah. It, it is not fun. You know, I was talking about uh, Brown, about it being in every moment of every day. It's not just the games that we see. Yeah. So the Wings are getting, not only are they losing, they're getting their ass handed to them here. Like they're getting yeah. blown out on a regular basis. And it and it feels like all that good work we did is now gone. Yeah. And it, and right now they're in the point where they they likely feel like they'll never win again. And it's frustrating. and you know, it's scary for your season because you can see it slipping away. So yeah. when when I read this, I you know, I was getting ready for the game yesterday. I didn't I didn't take the time to look at it, but I was like, no, oh, that didn't surprise me in the least. I mean, every game they're giving up five and six goals and just yeah, yeah, getting yeah. blown out of the water. Eventually the the pressure has to release a little bit and the guys afterward guaranteed, maybe not those two, but everybody else will yeah. be having it a giggle about it and the other guys will have a giggle about it later on. And then yeah. it just, sometimes it can help you just release the steam a little bit. Okay. Well, I want you to expand on that and ask Ray and Driggs because we have a question, I believe from Dan in Windsor specific to that and whether it can be a good thing. So we'll, we'll, okay. we'll revisit that whole scenario. Uh, let's wrap up headlines with the national predators, Ray. And, um, I mean, your buddy Andrew Burnett has his team clicking 13 games with at least one point. And I mean, they're comfortably locked in a wild card spot right now. Uh, not that they're taking their foot off the pedal, clearly. Big win. You know, we talk about measuring sticks or statement games, you know, which mm-hmm. is hard when you're at this point of the regular season. But if you're in Nashville and you've gone through the struggles that you've already been through this year and you play, a juggernaut team like the Winnipeg Jets, who we talked about on Tuesday here on the podcast, and you come out of that game with a win, decisive win over that team. I know Rick Bonus was sour post game. He was sour, but you know, credit where credit is due. Nashville is humming right now. They are. Um, I think we probably joked that they'll never go to a concert again um, <laughs> because the yeah. streak started after they canceled their trip to the Sphere after right, they got right, right. smashed at home. So there, we can tie that into Detroit. You know, they lost 9-2 at home. Nashville did. And since then, they've got 13 games in a row with a point out because that's when they canceled the, the trip out yeah. to Vegas and to go see the yeah. go to the sphere. Um they were not they were not thinking, oh, this is a playoff team. They thought maybe we'd be around the edges, but they were debating at a certain point whether to sell and move on or to be more competitive and bring in and they kind of stayed the course you know they they thought they were going to trade Novak who's a good player and they ended up signing him to a three-year extension and yeah they they play they play a fast like offensively minded game and um they're kind of fun to watch if you haven't watched them much watch them um yeah but they they are in a good spot and okay and again back this is how freaking hard this league is you talk about their you know the jets are a juggernaut their last three games they got pumped in vancouver five nothing yeah yeah they won a terrific game at home they were excellent on yeah. monday 
And then at home again, they got thumped by Nashville. It was four nothing before yeah. they scored. So it's a it's a hard league, man. There is just there's no there's no time to ever really be comfortable. No. And and Winnipeg's week has really been an example of that. Yeah, I mean UC Saros for the Preds eight zero and two in his last ten. Yep. I. You know, I never bought the trade speculation. I didn't. I, I, I can understand and appreciate Barry Trotz being okay with that being out there, right? You know, because you never know. Maybe somebody makes you an absurd offer and you have to consider it. Um, feel for the player and, and all of that. But you look at the quality of the goaltending that they get on a night-in, night-out basis from UC Saros. Come on. So... Every goalie yeah, six feet in the world should be throwing bouquets <laughs> to UC Soros because no kidding. Uh, I remember when he was drafted, David Poyle told us that if he was six foot two, he would have been a first round pick. They got him in yeah. the fourth round. Yeah. And because people were scared of his size. Interesting yeah. will be in the summer. They'll get through. They've got a terrific prospect that they drafted in the first round a few years ago, uh, mm. Yaroslav Askarov. And yeah. he's having a great year in Milwaukee and will be really interesting to watch yeah. him because he's the next one. And yeah. the last time we saw him, he was this wild, out of control, athletic goalie at the World Juniors. And then he's been in the American League and I guess yeah. he's just knocking it out of the park right now. So that'll be a decision for the summer. And then that's the reason why you even allow that trade speculation, right? I mean, if they don't have that coming then Saros is extended and we're not even having this conversation right. and there was no speculation at this point. All right, those are your headlines. Thank you, Tim Hortons. Ready to roll? Ah! All right, let's roll. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, I'm rolling in it. Play the 60th anniversary edition of Roll Up to Win on the Tim's app today. Our interviews on Rain Dregs brought to us by Canadian Club Whiskey, who have introduced the first release of the CC Invitation Series, CC 15-year-old Sherry Cast, all the hallmarks of classic Canadian club, with the added richness and sweetness of Sherry. Ask Rain Dregs anything. You can send us your questions on X and Instagram at Rain Dregs or on the website, rayanddregs.com. And have you ever been to Rocky Mountain House, Ray? Because I've never no, I've been not. to Rocky Mountain. Nope. I have not. All right. Well, Joanne in Rocky Mountain House has an interesting question. How hard is it for teams who are in a playoff fight or were in a playoff fight, yet sellers at the, the trade deadline to maintain morale down the stretch as their playoff hopes dwindle? And in parentheses, Joanne puts Calgary, the Calgary yeah. Flames. How difficult is that? Because I'm sure you've been in that spot. Well, it's it's obviously harder for the older guys. Um because they've seen the movie before, um, yeah. they have a they have a good indication of what their team is and where their team is headed. And unfortunately, as much as you can tell yourself, and if you do meditation, it tells you to be in the moment and just worry about today and not tomorrow because you can't control tomorrow. You you sit there in the season, you lose, and you think about. Yeah the game you think about the next game you think about the summer you think about next year and morale why it's brutal for it it's really hard yeah. to not let it affect the work because that's basically what it comes down to you're because when you move those players you're not going to be as good so if right. your if your level of quality is going to drop which it does and your work rate among the team drops as well another five percent well you're not even close like yeah. they played colorado two nights ago three nights ago and it wasn't even it wasn't even the same league agree and and yeah. they look demoralized um you know who you know to to the question you know who else looks like that is pittsburgh yes they look yeah. totally like the air is out of their tires and man they so they're is it five in a row They've been outscored 17 to three. Like they're yeah. just getting hammered. Floundering. Yeah. And it's the same thing. It is, it's next door to impossible to keep your energy up. And this, the message at some point will come from the coach or the general manager that, you know, it's, and it's more, um, more for Calgary than Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh's got 
so many guys that are locked into yeah. contracts, but the, it will come into, you know, you're, you're all playing to stay in this league. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're, you're playing to stay here. You're playing to stay in Calgary. If you want to be part of it, yeah. these games are super important. Like th that message will come. If it, if it hasn't yet, it'll come very soon. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's go back to Dan in Windsor who talked about, the uh, the situation with the Red Wings and the Sherratt Raymond fight uh, scuffle at best. Um, any good stories about teammates fighting in practice that that you can think of? And if you want to expand on what you said, in some ways, it's venting, but it it can be good for the team moving forward. Why well, I, I I remember a couple of that were not good. Um, because it, it didn't just have to do with frustration. It was a couple of guys uh, that didn't like each other, and that was that was not good. Um, I do recall, like, in Hartford, um, like Kevin Deneen and, and Old Salmon <laughs> predictably <laughs> getting into it. And Fred, they were just like, they were like chopping wood in front oh, of the yeah. net. And, and then eventually, like, it ends. Some, you know, guys get in there and separate them, and and then, you know, they, after a short bit of time, they're like best buddies, right? Like they're good friends yeah, and they yeah. just, they laugh at it. Um, we were, I don't know what happened. We were doing a power play drill in Hartford and Bradshaw, who's the associate coach in, uh, in Philly and I were good friends and, um, he was cross checking me or something and I slashed <laughs> him or something. I don't recall. And we ended up in kind of a non-stick dropping, non-glove dropping fight. So it was just kind of, you can imagine how ridiculous that looked. So anyways, again, I don't think anybody tried too hard to break it up because it just stopped because right. it was it was ridiculous. <laughs> and so I go home after practice and my wife at the time says, yeah, the Shaws are coming over for dinner tonight. And I'm like, oh, really? And Brad and I just had a fight in practice. And she's like, Dude, should I cancel? I think now we'll be we'll be fine, and so <laughs> they came for dinner, and it was fine. So, so he, does he walks in the door, and you have a chuckle and shake oh, hands, and absolutely. Get over it? It, I remember <laughs> just like kind of laughing at him when he came in the door, and he laughed at me, and then we had dinner, <laughs> and that was it. That's so. outstanding. Because I would think too. I mean, obviously you were buddies, but mm -hmm. there there is this thought that all teammates are pals. Well, that's not real. That's not how life no. is, right? I mean, your work environment, this is your work environment. Yes, you have to work together for a common goal, but that doesn't mean you like each other or like everybody that you're sitting beside or playing with. Well, just think of it like this. So you, there's a guy that just doesn't, you guys just don't drive, right? It just doesn't no. work. Yeah. And yeah. so you go to practice and then you go on an eight day road trip. So now you get to the plane, you're flying on the same plane. You get on a bus, you're on the same bus. You go to pregame meals, you're, there's only four tables or five tables, so you're sitting there. Then you go into the locker room. Then you go to the game. Then you get on yeah. the bus. Then you, like, if you don't like the guy, if there's two guys that are <laughs> like, you know, rub up, you know, and they bug each other, well, they're going to, eventually you're going to be stepping on each other's toes. Like, there's no way. It's not like no. you can go home. Like you, you're always right back there. And so, yeah, it's, it's not like every your everybody's favorite no. people are around there all the time. All right, let's take one more and ask Green Drake to anything. This one is from Dale in Winnipeg, who says, "Love the show, guys. Thank you, Dale. Uh, Ray, you seem to be on the road an awful lot. Yes, you are on the road an awful yep. lot. So, how do you pass the time on flights?" Um, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let me. I will say you do a lot of work on on flights. You're prepping yep. for whatever game you're heading to next, uh, and in certain weeks there's more than a couple of games. So you're trying to get ahead, right? Yep. So beyond the obvious of of working as hard as you do, is it movies? Are you listening to music? Do you converse with strangers that you're seated next to? I mean, Dale wants That's, to know what's going on in, in Ray's world on an airplane. I would say. 70% of the time I'm working, 15% uh, of the time I'm sleeping. Yeah. Um, and as far as conversing, that's a dangerous one. If, if I get to three questions about, yeah, about 
NHL stuff. Like there's different. Okay. So I, if somebody recognizes me and we have a conversation, that's totally fine. Totally good. When the person asks a question just as an opening, so he can tell me everything that he knows about the league. I generally ask him what he does and then ask him eight questions about what he does because eventually he's not, doesn't want to talk about himself either. No like, boy, you're a better man than me. Like I, I just, I, mm. I don't, I, I like to talk to people. I really, as you know, I mean, I'll talk yeah. to just about anybody, but right. um, it's there, there is a point where I'm like, no, not now. I don't have it. I don't have yeah. it in the, and, yeah. and, 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 it, and I'm sure there are times where people go, man, that guy was a jerk. He didn't want to talk about the, my favorite team, but sometimes I'm just like, I'm worn out. And yeah. um, you're right. The travel is, the travel's the, the hardest part of the job for sure, because yeah. I, I am gone a lot. And so I don't, what's evolved over the years, I'll say is I, I don't, don't do much work at home. Hmm, I do, perfect. I do most of, do most of my reading. Uh, while the kids are at school, like that sort of prep. But yeah. once once three o'clock rolls around, like I'm I'm done for the day. Excellent. All right. Well, what's your weekend look like as we wrap up Rand Riggs? Uh, I just um, I got an, a, an alert as we were talking here to check in for my flight tomorrow. I'm going yeah. to Pittsburgh. Um, I, I'm sure it'll be a happy group of penguins when we get there. Uh, Boston is in. Is it Boston? Yeah. No, Rangers tomorrow. Sorry, or okay. Saturday. Rangers yeah. are rolling along here. They're they're really, really on a great stretch. And so Rangers at Pittsburgh Saturday, yeah. home Sunday, and then uh two Canuck games next week at home. So those and those are home. So those are really it's yeah. so a, a busy week, but most of it at home. So how Florida. about you? You uh what Florida. do you heard of when from uh, Sunday morning? Um you know what? I always look forward to the March GM meetings, mostly because, you know, they get in the, these breakout groups, right? And it's not just NHL general managers. It's, you know, other people from around the NHL head office and whatnot. And they talk about interesting stuff, tweaking of rules and all of those things. The March meetings for me are always the best because, you know, they're looking also forward to the playoffs. As an example, remember the Kreider goal? Was it early in January, where he stopped up on the puck. So he literally went into the stopping motion and propelled the puck into the net, right? Right. And I I remember having that exchange with Coley Campbell at the time. And I'm like, I, I mean, I, I understand why it should count. And he was like, I hate that play. <laughs> and every time I brought it up, the managers, no, no, we need to allow that. And, you know, he goes back to the old, okay, what if it happens against you in game seven of the Stanley Cup final? Right. Like they're always projecting the what ifs with the playoffs looming. So well, actually, they, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. They should project them. Um, that Okay, when I hear that, I think about the absolute mess that the yeah. offside rule has become because Matt Duchesne <laughs> was 72 feet offside and, yeah, yeah. and some linesman happened to miss it. Right. And, and so – We've already got distinct kicking motion. I think we can pretty well tell. We've we've pretty well worked that rule to the point you can tell almost immediately right. whether it is or is not a goal. And that's the way it should be. Yeah. So now you're going to determine, is he stopping to stop? Is he stopping to redirect the puck? Like, yeah, it gets pretty I, complicated. It, it yeah. Get, and yeah, no, just leave it. It's fine. It's well, fine. Another thing that uh, they'll be talking about um, I don't know if it'll gain traction, but I know you're an advocate of this, uh, is, you know, the fact that there's no cap compliancy in, in the postseason. Now, right. Again, that, that's a complex issue because you got to bring the players association into it and, right. and all of that. But I do know that the league is expecting some form of push from four or five teams. You know, just to, again, let's explore the discussion. Is there an appetite to even go down that road from a league and a players association perspective? So things like that, you know, I don't know, might be eye glazing for the hockey fan out there, but uh, no, me, but when, it, I would say, Dregs, is this not the meeting, though, that if people are expecting big change, this is not the one. 
Uh, no, this is the one where if there's a rule tweak or a rule change, normally it, it comes out of this meeting and then goes to the competition right. committee and so on. So yeah, I mean, this is more yeah. like setting the setting the table Agreed. up. Yeah, and um, yeah, you know, and and looking Ooh. to looking you know forward going to come under fire a little bit here. Oh, you, you'll be surprised. Not even a little bit surprised. George Peros, Department of Player Safety. Yeah. Mm. He, he he's preparing a more expansive presentation than what he normally would give at the GM meetings. And good on George. I think this is all right. All the noise around the Morgan Riley suspension. Here's why it elevated to this number of games. And then show the comparison to, you know, a suspension of one game or two games and why that was that. And then you get peppered by all the managers until Commissioner Bettman stands up and says, okay, I've had enough of your nonsense. We're moving on now. <laughs> That's what yeah. normally happens, but this one's going to have a little bite to it. So stay tuned. We'll talk about it on Tuesday, Ray. Oh, uh, I, I like that. And there is there is no part of the NHL um, mechanism that frustrates fans more than, I think, than player yeah. safety. Yeah. And one of the reasons is, and this is not just on George, this has been... You know, this has been long standing, but yeah. this is what we're talking about. And so is the lack of consistency and the lack of understanding. That's the word. Yeah, that's yeah. the word. But the, the, if the understanding is this sort of play gets you this sort of range, yeah. I think people would be much more understanding of it. The fact that Agreed. it seems all over the place, that it, it doesn't, it, it's not good. It's not good for yeah. the game that there is that lack of understanding it's not good for the image of the game right. that there's a lack of understanding about what the rules really are going to how the rules are going to be enforced so there you go i mean we've already got the podcast basically mapped out for tuesday devon taves hopefully yeah. be a part of that from the colorado avalanche and we'll revisit all the goings on at the gm meeting that, so that'll give you yeah. that'll give you more time to stroll the beach in your speedo and yeah, you know, maybe the salt water, the salt air will help kind of clear me out a little bit. Well, it can't do you any worse. It's it's like it's just not it's not it's not like working for you know like and you you like the no, tanning, no. right? You like to tan. You're a you're a big tanner. Yeah, there'll be no tanning. There'll be zero. <laughs> there might be a walk on the beach, but there'll be no tanning. I do have a quick. Let's wrap up with this. Ryan Rashog planking story on the beach from years ago. Oh, I'd like to hear. Yeah, I mean, at that time, he, you know, felt like he was in really good shape. And I think I had my family on the beach at the time with lovely Holly, Katie, and Mason. And Ryan decided that he was going to show off and show everybody on the beach that he could plank for, like, two minutes or three minutes. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because I know you're... Ex you're leaving out some details of this yeah which yeah. is great but i want to hear how it ended so well uh you know what he, he's gonna be so sour that i'm sharing this yeah i'm um, making my ran dregs debut right now to defend myself mason challenged me to a planking competition it's his idea. Uh, which i that, lost by the way yeah that could be true but i think mason at the time mason dreger was like nine something like that so. <laughs> Anyway, just envision if you can Ryan Rashog, you know, in his trunks, planking for everybody to see. I yeah, I, I can't see how that ever was going to turn out well. <laughs> We're all still envisioning you in a speedo, which yeah. they laid out nicely, yeah. Greg. Yeah, no, let's not go there. Yeah, he wandered right past that quite quickly. Didn't yes, he? I did. All right, Ray, Ryan, thanks for joining us there. We appreciate yeah. that. Well, and, have a good uh, weekend, everybody. Thanks for listening. And yeah. um, uh, we're, we're getting down to the good stuff now. There's not much left. No. And thank you to our sponsors who continue to support Ray and Dregs, our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey, and Tim Hortons. And yes, thank you for rating, for sharing, for listening, and for following us on the Ray and Dregs YouTube channel as well. Until next time, stay safe, everybody.